Do Asian parents focus on academics too much? Or does everybody else just need to step their game up? Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. David, what do you got for the people today? The College Board just released a study showing that 6% of the U.S. population, which is Asian Americans, make up over 40% of the elite SAT test scores at 1,400 and up. They do love taking tests. So Asians are rep overrepresented in the high test scores, especially for the SAT. But what about other groups being overrepresented in other industries? Well, for example, in sports, Andrew, white people make up 90% of the hockey and NASCAR people. And there are 60% of the population that's overrepresented. Black people make up 13.5% of the population. They make up over 70% of the NBA and NFL. Logical. That's 5X. Hispanics are overrepresented in baseball. It jumps from 18% to over 30%. And Indians, we're taking Indians out of Asians for right now, South Asians are 1% of the population, but they make up 30% of national spelling bee contestants. That's 30X. Yo, man, Indi Indian spell well, yeah. Um, so I think like, obviously, uh, what, what issue does this bring up? Why is this concerning? First of all, if you guys are interested by this topic, please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the Hop Hop Boys. Moving back to the question, David, why is this concerning for some people? Or what is the controversy behind these, I guess, overrepresentations in industries. Right, yeah, it has to do with this term racial asymmetry, which basically means that certain industries do not reflect the actual racial distribution of America. Obviously that makes sense because everybody's in a different situation, different groups have different cultures, they have different immigration waves and this and that pattern. Um, but I think that when it comes to public education, especially like the SATs, elite private high schools, elite public colleges, I mean, elite public high schools, I'm sorry. People just think like, are the public systems doing enough to address inequality? And like Asians are starting to get lumped in with white people due to like outcomes, even though of course, even within Asians, there's a lot of uh, diversity, low key, you know, with the A uh, East Asian, the Southeast Asian, the immigration wave, refugee versus non-refugee. Mm -hmm. But I mean, um, basically it's like a huge issue that's exploding right now, whether you're talking about Lowell High School, Stuyvesant High School, these are elite public high schools, and even in Boston, like all around America. Yeah, and I think it raises a lot of questions. Obviously a lot of people are arguing like, oh, is it, really more depend on the cultural values of the family, on whether they value education, or does it depend on the opportunities that that family has to focus on education? Right, maybe parents aren't working like be four jobs. Because I'll be honest, if you poll most parents, most parents always say that they do value education. Now, obviously, there's certain families who are putting more time into the academics of that kid, for uh, sure. So first of all, let's just address like the situations of the parents. I definitely think that, um, you know, whether it's like one parent, two parent, this comes into play, right. what types of jobs that the parents have. Um, their education Their level. education level. Like, let's say, for example, a lot of Asians, not all, but like some Asians were able to immigrate to America on elite academic, like visas. Right. You know what I mean? That was a situation. Obviously, their kids are going to be good at school because their parents came to America mm -hmm. good at school. Uh, that actually self-selected population is also the true with Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Nigerians, uh, all the elite Nigerians were able to come to America. That kind of led to like a lot of certain outcomes from the kids mm -hmm. that are also very academic. But, but that's not to say that all Asian kids who are doing well in school do come from families that are educated. A lot of them are just like, you know, small shop owners, whatever. Yeah, you know, could cut Tasio for a living. Or just are selling vegetables, yeah, to be honest. noodles like, or whatever. We've like seen that. it all the time, right? Yeah. And it's I think kind of like it, more people would give credit to almost the community values and cultural values or the cultural, at least community opportunities too, where yeah. there's more specialized like uh, test prep schools within the Asian community. Obviously, yeah. this you is something could they say, value. well, it's because Asians don't really see themselves represented in media or entertainment. So of course, Asians are kind of smaller physically. We're not going to go into pro sports. You don't really see any Asian like rich entertainers right. like Jay-Z or whoever right. like that. So it's like Asians are going to chase right. that. So of course, but it also comes back to the ancient culture, Confucianism, the Gaokao, national exams. Like Asians have had a culture of a national exam right. determining your future your, oh. like your first 18 years determining the next 80 years of your life, that has been a cultural value for like an incredibly long time, like thousands of years. So a lot of people are trying to figure this out. They're trying to give more students opportunities, you know, students from underserved communities, they want- Specifically them, like black and brown. Yeah, like, they like, wanna give more black and brown kids more opportunities to be in these elite high schools. A lot of people find a lot of problem with this. It's, controvers it's controversial because you're taking away spots from other kids who try really hard their whole life. And, and then now there's like this lottery system. And it's so crazy what, in the media too, the way it like ends up looking like Asian versus black on this issue, which is like, I think there's a way more complicated on the back end, but like, if you just pop up the photos, I mean, yeah, it's very that's how it and, appears in photos and visually, it definitely feels. I like mean, that. does it boil down to just like, where does the Lavar Ball attitude end up? Like, you know, how Lavar Ball raises kids to hoop. 
But then you could be the LeVar ball on your kids for books. I try to make it rhyme. For books, yeah. Yeah, books and hoops. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's what people are arguing, right? That's the argument saying like, hey, just keep it a meritocracy on my side. But then there's the other side that's like, hey, we're not given the same opportunities. Our community doesn't have these other resources. So obviously... To, to buoy up our kids. And not only that, of course, they're on a micro level, there's the execution factors. There's a lot of dads who try to be LeVar Ball for the NBA and it didn't work out. So, you know, just like a lot right. of people, I didn't go to Harvard. My parents wanted me to do that. I wasn't able to do it. Yeah, I mean, even if you give dad some version of LeVar Ball status, he didn't, he didn't achieve it. The kids didn't go to the NBA, uh, essentially. Oh, actually, so. actually, yeah. Some people, Tracy did. Shout out to our sister. Oh, uh, yeah. Tracy sort of did. Yeah, 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 he's right. Um, but... So what are some solutions that people have? There's a lot of different creative solutions. I want people in the comments down below to also share some of their yeah, yeah, creative yeah. solutions too. And the reason why we sped through the weeds so quickly, Andrew, right now, I mean, we like try to shout out everything in the, really quickly because you could get stuck in the weeds forever. Dude, it's like nature versus nurture dude. and culture versus cultivation and all this blah, 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 community stuff. Judging people's cultural values. Yes. I mean, you can't, it could go on and on. We don't need to get into right. it. What's linked to this and what's linked to that, to which dominoes. What are some of the clever solutions that people are having? Now, are, no solution is maybe 100% perfect. I think there's three situations. One side just completely gives up, right? There's uh, hybrid solutions from the government. And then there's one, like, just solutions that nobody's ever predicted before. So let's just go through it real quick, Andrew. One side giving up, what does that look like? Uh, just the Asian families having to take the fact that some spots that might go to their kids are just going to go to a lottery system of kids who uh, maybe... Just living did near not the school, prepare right? themselves yeah. as much, or don't live in, uh, or don't live in families of ideal situations. Um, I think that this is also moving to the suburbs. This is actually what a lot of white kids did when the white kids didn't want to compete with the Asian kids in the test scores. Mm -hmm. They either went to private schools or they just moved to rich suburbs. Yeah. So actually, the white people are really not in this discussion anymore because they don't care. Uh, and then I would say, I guess on the other side, for a certain advocates of the lottery system, them giving up just means like, oh yeah, everything's just based off raw test score. Mm -hmm. A hybrid approach based off the government would be like something what they did in Boston, where, um, Andrew, they split up Boston into eight different sections based off income range and geography and racial demographics. And they took the top 10% of test takers from eight different sections of Boston. Mm. So basically they still wanted kids who tried hard at school, but they controlled for family situation and right. income. Right. I thought that that makes sense. And then for third, I got some crazy off the wall solutions that are a little bit more simple because what they did in Boston, Andrew, it's hard to do. Like they could do it. There's no data yet. It sounds good. Okay. What if Asian parents said, okay, I'll give you 10%. 10% what? Discount? 10 no, what are you talking yeah, about? 10% <laughs> off. Okay. No, it's it a good would deal. essentially be 10% off where it's like basically you can't really complain that much if a kid is within your kid by 10% on a test score, whether that's SAT or whether that's- Oh, a 10% med uh, uh, standard deviation. Right. Where it's kind of like, if there's a kid from- 1,300 to 1,400. Yeah, a kid from a worse family uh, or underserved community, black and brown kid, they score like an 80 and your kid scores a 90. You get, like, well, that would be 80, yeah. They're within 80, range. Within They're range. within range of also being able to compete for your kid's spot. Yeah. So they just and I get why Asian parents would not, bump. And I get why. And I believe me, bump. I get why Asian parents right now, specifically Chinese parents, you know, come from the Gaokao world. You know, the national exams, Confucianism. We invented the national exam. I get why they're against like any of it, but there does have to be some sort of like tweaking and rebalancing to address in inequity on the public school side. Yeah. I can see why people say, okay, public institutions, eh, me, I, I do get both sides. I think there's valid arguments on both sides. Asians just got here and now they're just doing too good or whatever. I don't know. I get it. Um, I think that we got to give kids better schooling when they're young. So in Sweden right now, they are giving, especially lower income families, free preschool for their kids to go to. And the lower income families get the first priority to use the free preschool. And I think that's things like that in America would really help where you put these kids into school, uh, take them maybe outside of their unideal family environment or community environment, whatever it is, you put them in school early on, it builds good habits so that you don't try to have to, 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 to hurt kids at like high school, man. I think high school is a little late I'm not saying it can't be done or there's like, yeah. oh, hope is it, lost. It I'm just seems saying, very performative yeah. to basically make up for other things that you're not in control yeah, of. Yeah, I'm just like, yo, better elementaries and better middle schools and better preschool programs. I think that would really help. I think that's building the good What do you think about what the New York City 
school chancellor said, who said Asian parents need to understand if their kids don't get into a top five elite public high school, their life's not over. Well, that's basically the question that I said in the beginning, which is do Asians focus too much on academics? And this chancellor was like, hey man, it's not over for your kid if they don't go okay. into the top five. I would have been semi okay with his statement if he would have augmented it by saying like, here's a program for immigrant parents to understand the other ways their kids can be successful, whether that's trading stocks, crypto, networking, sales, PR, all these other yeah. things that are not like hardcore STEM subjects. Cause yeah. it's true. Like obviously we coming from Asia, a lot of the parents don't really believe in like having a good career as like a rich marketer. Oh, like the, uh... That's like not something that even really exists that much in Asia, maybe more recently. But like, basically what I'm saying is I didn't like how the school chancellor was basically telling Asian parents to chill out, but he wasn't offering them like a compromise or like yeah. a trade. No, I think that there needs to be more of a trade. You're right. That, that basically if you're going to implement some system that will inevitably take spots away from Asian kids who also deserve it, then you have to provide some other alternative program or some alternative class or something. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these parents, some of the parents are educated that are raising these Asian kids and some of them are not. Some of them are just, you know, serving Chinese blue collar workers, you know, selling vegetables or whatever, right? Washing dishes, even possibly like collecting They're not cans, privileged. You know? yeah. They're not educated um, Like there's a pretty big, uh, Chinese Americans actually specifically have the largest income diversity in America and actually the largest income diversity. Yeah in the world. Yeah, there's a lot of Asians still in poverty. So I think, anyways, there's no perfect solution right now that's 100% going to help everybody as much as they want. But I do think that there needs to be a little bit more creative solutions. Um, and I do think raising the floor, obviously like underserved communities, black and brown communities, like helping them get up and giving them better schooling no, early is on fair. is it extremely is important. Yeah, no, they, it's ex important for the rest of this, the, the society, to be honest, you know, it has, it has very, uh, long-term implications right so so you need to to help people out more um but anyways guys you let us know in the comments down below what you think all right everybody thanks so much for watching until next time we out peace, peace.